on as well. Good to have you all on. Glad you tuned in today. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's get into the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, first six verses. Our text verse is out of verse number six. And I want to hone in on that and just sit there for a little while. Verse number six is the text verse. And I want you to think about this as I thought about it all week long. And I hope this morning that I can bring across to you that what God laid on my heart because I, I was praying this week, Lord, what, uh, what would you have us to look at? And uh, it just kind of struck my heart about living by faith, having faith, having real faith. Uh, we need it uh, today. Real faith. Turn on away. Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. 6, our text verse. Following your Bible. Glad you got it out. It's great to hold the word of God. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, that's faith, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. That's very important. He pleased God. How? That next verse tells us, verse number six, by, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, that's God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That struck me very heavy in this way. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You want to please God? So do I. In order to please God, faith has got to be present. That just really blew me away this week. And so I want to start a little series, maybe a week or two or three, it won't be long, I don't think, on what is it like to have faith? What kind of faith? And so as I start to go through the Bible, and you'll find out Next week and the week after that, there's great faith. There's little faith. Uh, there's uh, uh, no faith. Uh, but this morning, having faith, it is so vital. I'm sore at, at getting this out because I want you to think about it. <clears throat> How much faith do we really have? How much, how much do we do on our own? And how much do we do simply by faith? There's a big, vast difference. Vast difference. I think a lot of what we do, we do on our own. We make decisions on our own. We make plans on our own. And it has nothing to do with faith that God is going to see us through. And I want us to think about this, River West, 
and others that are tuning in. How much of our lives have been planned out by ourselves and really don't need much faith in God? See, we're not pleasing God then. Boy, that's harsh, but it's true. So unless we have faith in what we're doing and God is preeminent in it, we're not pleasing him. We're not pleasing him. But I want to please him. So do you want to please him? I know you do. I want to please the Lord Jesus. So the only way I can do that, the, the only thing that needs to ha happen in my life is that everything I do has an aspect or is led by or is precipitated by faith. I, I know good music that glorifies God, pleases God, and that's true. Kindness pleases God. Comforting others pleases God. But here's the key to all of this. One thing that is essential is faith. For example, I must be, through music, praising God through good music, but with faith. So faith has got to be added to everything. you got to have kindness with faith. You, you, you've got to have holiness and faith. See, without faith, if you leave the faith out of it, you cannot please God. That's how vital it is. Are we getting it this morning? Shake your head. Say yes. Let me hear you. It's true. We need to include faith in everything we do. So, leaving faith out is like leaving baking powder out of pancakes. I've got a story. I think it was Kate, maybe all the grandkids, was over. And I, Marilyn, you know, she wants to please the grandkids. So she said, uh, you want me to make pancakes for breakfast? Yeah, oh, yeah, we wonderful. I think that's Izzy's favorite food. Uh, and she's an expert at making pancakes. But Marilyn knew she didn't have any baking powder. She knew it. But she was going to try to make pancakes without it. And so she whipped it up, flour and all the other stuff, and tried to put a substitute in instead of baking powder. Guess what happened to the pancakes? My, my. Kate, to this very day, still said, uh, Grandma, don't make pancakes, please. Why? Because they didn't taste very good. You know why? There was a missing ingredient. And that's the way it is between us and God. If we don't have faith, if we're not practicing everything we do with faith, we're not pleasing God. Oh, it may get done. You may get what you plan done, but it will not please God. Why? Because we weren't trusting him while we were doing it. We relied upon us and we didn't rely upon God. I know Don is working on getting property. We're working on it. We're looking here and there and everywhere. But I want to tell us, dear church, dear people, if we are doing it in our own strength, and I'm preaching to myself this morning and this very thing, if we're doing it in our own strength and we're making the decision, we're looking and we're finding the right place and finding the right property and finding the right building and we're leaving, oh, we kind of include God in it. But we haven't made him preeminent. He isn't number one. If we're doing it without faith in him, it's going to be wrong. And it will not please God. Oh, we'll have a building. We'll have a church that's operable. But it's not going to be pleasing to God. Everything we do has got to please God. How? By faith, 
you know, Marilyn and I practice uh, not a whole lot, but but we do practice because we want to please God. But I'll tell you the honest truth. <laughs> my voice, my singing voice is gone, and that's okay. If you can endure it, uh, I can too. But there, there's times she's got to change from A3 to A2 to G2 to G to D2. And we're all over the, we're all over the map. But you know, when we really come to play and sing with you and sing with you, the one ingredient that we do it for is to please God. And we do it by faith. I pray every Saturday night, Lord, give me a clear voice on Sunday. Not to be able to preach, though that's very important. Because I still have a speaking voice. But I pray and I say, dear God, would you give me Sunday morning a singing voice? I'm praying it by faith. Lord, give us a building. Not because we chose it. Not because we figured it's the best building. Not because we have decided. Lord, give us a building. And we're going to follow you. We're going to step out. We're going to do it by faith in God. So that being the introduction, go now, would you please, to 1 Kings chapter 17. <clears throat> 1 Kings chapter 17. I want to give you six things this morning out of this very short text that the Lord uh, showed me uh, as I prepared this message. Six things about faith. First Kings 17. If you're there, say an amen. amen. There, amen. First Kings 17, one through three. The Bible said, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. That's Elijah's word through God. And the word of the Lord came unto him. That's Elijah. The word of the Lord came unto Elijah, saying, here's what it said. Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherish." That is before Jordan. So number one thing about faith that we want to learn today is this. Faith knows when to fight and faith knows when to flee. Faith. Faith. Who? In God. We're, we're, we're faith in God. Faith knows when to fight and faith knows when to flee. Ahab, one of the most worst kings of all for the Jews, for Israel. Wicked, his wife Jezebel, even worse. And so Elijah went to him and said, it is not going to rain or have dew until I say so through God. Well, that's not going to sit very well with Ahab, what do you think he's going to do to Elijah? Uh, of course, he's surely not going to like him uh, and may do something even more. And so God told Elijah, flee. Now, we would think that Elijah was afraid. Well, Elijah didn't flee from Ahab because he was afraid. Elijah flee, fleed. <laughs> fled from Ahab because God told him to run. He didn't run because he was scared. See, there is a time to fight and a time to flee. I want to just make a side comment 
it is too bad what happened in Washington. That was not a time to fight. See, a house divided against itself can not stand. America is divided and the Bible is more truthful than any constitution. That is, if America is divided, it can not stand. Hey, use that in your home. If you and your wife are divided, you cannot stand. If a church becomes divided, it cannot stand. The importance of unity is absolutely vital in order to stand and stand for God. Let's you and I, let's us, let's as Christians stay united. We may not agree on everything and that's okay because we need different opinions, but let's not divide over things that should keep us united. As we're looking for a church building, let's stay together on this, amen? saying amen stay together so there's a time to fight and there's a time to flee not every battle is like david and goliath for a christian there's nothing wrong with fleeing i used to play hockey it was just a commercial league it wasn't anything that i got paid for it was a sporting event I used to enjoy it I used to uh, play against a team called the Merchants. There was a guy on the Merchant team who was huge, absolutely huge. And he would kind of lose it every once in a while. He'd like to fight anybody. I played defense for the Cougars. So the Cougars were playing the Merchants. And this fellow on the Merchants kind of lost it. He was looking to pick a fight for anybody. Guess how wise I was in that. I did nothing but flee. But I want to tell you, another time we were paying, playing, I, I got to use this, it's not derogatory, I love this nation. We were playing the, the Norwick Braves. Yeah, a native group, First Nations group. Uh, I used to drive them around. Nevertheless, it was, we were playing the totems, uh, no, uh, the, the Braves. And my, my defenseman uh, was uh, checking a guy and the, and the guy on the Braves team speared him. Boom, brother Mark, that is one thing you do not do. You got it? You don't spear in hockey. You don't, you body check, you don't spear. Well, I lost it. I lost it. This calm, nice, gentle, good guy, Christian, went after the guy that speared my defenseman. Two guys had to hold him back. Did you get that, Marilyn? Two guys. My good night. There was a time that I had muscle. Nevertheless, they held me back. So what am I saying? There's a time to fight. And there's a time to flee. And Elijah knew it was now time to flee. Why? God has said so. See, Ecclesiastes said, there's a time for everything. So faith is obeying whether you fight or whether you flee, because faith is obeying what God has said for us to do. And for this case, Elijah was to flee. Now, I got it. Say one more thing about that. If you want to know if Elijah was afraid to fight, you read 1 Kings chapter 18 where he stood before uh, uh, Ahab and Jezebel and 450 false prophets and said, if God be God, serve God. He poured water on the altar. Remember that whole story in, in chapter 18? He was not afraid to fight, but he was faithful in following by faith what God said to do. I think Elijah would have rather faced Ahab and said, let's have it out, Buster. I serve an almighty God, but I'm telling you this, faith tells you what to do. See, without faith, if Elijah would have stopped 
and fought Ahab, he would have been disobeying to God. Brother Mark, faith is obeying God when it doesn't look like we will win. But we got faith in Almighty God because God knows what he's doing. And if God says flee, then flee for his sake and your sake. Where are you going to go? So Elisha went where God said, I'll go to the brook, cherish. Number two, faith is trusting God to provide when there is no supply. Oh boy. Oh boy, faith is trusting God when there is no supply. There's no store, no pantry. He's simply by a brook. That is it. Look in verses four and five. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherish, that is, before Jordan. So, faith is trusting God when he tells us to do something, but it doesn't look like there's going to be a supply. How is he going to eat? He knows what he's going to drink, because the, that's the brook. That's what it's for. Dwell by the brook. He said, drink of the brook, verse number four. And the ravens are going to bring the food daily. Wow. Well, that leads me to number three. The third thing about faith is faith is waiting for God to do what he promised. Faith is waiting on God for God to do what he promised promised. All the promises in the book of mine, standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages, let us praise his ring, glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. God's not scared of COVID. God knows we want a building. God knows our financial position, which is really very good. And I want to commend you people for continuing to tithe and give in spite of not gathering together. Good for you. God bless you. God will bless you for it. I know he will. You know why I know that? The promises of God. Don't go on my promises. Man, I'll make some promises and they'll never uh, really fall. It just won't work. Because I'm not God. But when God makes a promise, he will see it through. Get that deep down in your soul. By faith, you believe that God will do what he says he will. That's number two. Number three, faith is waiting for God to do what he promised, and he will do it. So that means to wait on God. You wait on God. You don't run ahead. You don't make your plans. We don't make our plans. We wait on God. You know, for some of us, waiting is a very hard thing. Wait means don't do nothing but wait for God to open up the door. Don't do nothing. Wait for God to bring the supplies. So every day, Elijah had to wait for the ravens to come. The water was there. That's why he sent them to the brook. How can raven? watch this now. How can ravens bring water? That little thing tells you that God knew exactly what he was doing. He knew ravens couldn't bring water. And so he sent Elijah to a brook where there was all kinds of water. But he knew that ravens could bring the food morning 
and night, maybe even noon, maybe even a snack every once in a while. And God could. He thought way ahead. How am I going to get Elijah to drink water? Wow. See, God's way beyond you and I. He already knows the building that we're going to get. Do you know that God already knows it? God already knows everything in advance. Why not have faith in an almighty God that knows everything that's ever going to happen? So we got to wait on him sometimes. I don't know if you find it hard to wait, but sometimes... I find it a little difficult. I want it, and I want it when? Yeah. Now. So let me give you a couple of verses on waiting. That's what Elijah had to do. Faith is waiting. Here's, here's a few. I'll just quote them for you. You want to write them down, I'll give you the reference. Psalm 27, 14. Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Isn't that a great verse? I'll give you another one. Psalm 37 and verse 7. Psalm 37 and verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So don't worry how good things are going for other people. What God is saying, just wait patiently. Wait patiently. Then give you another one. Lamentations chapter 3. Verse 25, Lamentations 3 and 25. The Bible said, The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. I want to go on a little sidetrack here, and then we'll, I'll give you a couple more verses. That's what went wrong with Abraham and Sarah. God had promised them a born son. To them. Amen? Amen. So don't 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 think that you uh, uh, are any uh, go any more wrong than what Abraham did. We have the same problem. We have the same problem. Uh, he 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 was getting old. Uh, I, I want to say to our single gals, you're not getting too old. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. So Abraham and Sarah talked about it, and Sarah said, take my handmaid, Hagar, and have a child with. Now, and Abraham listened. And that created a problem that we are still battling in our world today. You know what they did was wrong? They waited not on the Lord. Because God did follow through and God's promises did happen. Wait on the Lord. Do you get that? Doesn't mean we're not, we shouldn't work. Doesn't mean we shouldn't go ahead. Doesn't mean we shouldn't think. Doesn't mean we shouldn't plan, but wait on the Lord. So I'll give you a couple of more verses. Acts chapter number one and verse four about waiting. Doesn't this all make sense? See, you got to have faith in order to please God. But faith says to wait. So here it is, Acts 1, 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them, that's the disciples, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, 
which saith he, ye have heard of me. What was that? That was Pentecost. That was the coming of the Holy Spirit. That was the infilling. That was the Holy Spirit to come because Jesus was going back up into heaven. And he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit. And he did. And they were to wait in Jerusalem, in the upper room, for the Holy Spirit. And you know what? They listened and they waited and God did send the Holy Spirit. And what a moving, what a power, what preaching, what all occurred. There were thousands that got saved because they waited on the Lord for the power that needed to happen. Oh, my soul. I'm learning lots about waiting on God, not running ahead and not lagging behind. Oh, God, teach us what it means to wait. Speak to us about having faith in you that you'll follow through with your promises. I was in Grace Hospital a couple of weeks ago. You know what? I'm not going back over that. It was quite an experience. Nevertheless, I don't want to tell you a little segment of what I had to learn while lying in the hospital or sitting in the hospital. Uh, they hooked me up to IVs, they did all kinds of, anyway, uh, that's beside it. But they put two bags of intravenous on a pole, hooked me up in the veins. One was a small bag and the nurse set the drip. And sure enough, I watched it drip, drip, drip. It took almost an hour for that little bag to go into my body. They were cleaning out uh, my kidneys, whatever. But beside the little bag, there was a bag about four times its size. And a nurse came in and said, oh, I see you, you emptied the first bag. I'm gonna set the other bag. She set the drip even slower. I looked at that and she disappeared. I said, that one bag, the small bag took an hour. This bag is four times its size and the drip's even slower. I'm gonna be here all day. Guess what was going through my mind? I wanna get done. I wanna get out of here. I wanna get finished. I wanna go and I don't wanna go now. By the way, by the way, let me do a little sidetrack. I remember a man that I went to visit in the hospital. He was getting treatments also for his kidneys and he didn't wait for the right medication and he ripped it out of his arm. Listen to me, I was there. He ripped it out of his arm and he said, I'm out of here. He died. Patience is a tremendous, a tremendous, when God says, wait, they that wait, we're going to do this maybe some, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. You know the song, they that wait upon the Lord. So I learned patience at Grace Hospital. Thank you, Lord, and I'm fine, and I'm healthy. Thank you, Lord. Number four, faith. This is all about faith. It takes daily faith. Verse number six, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. So every day, Elisha had to have faith, every day. It wasn't that he had faith and everything worked out all right. No, he had to have faith in the morning. The ravens were coming. He had to have faith at night that the ravens would come again. He had a faith on Tuesday. He had a faith on Wednesday. He had a faith on Thursday, all the way through, all week long. And he had to have faith again and faith again. It was just a, not a one-time faith. It was a continual faith. We need daily faith 
in God for everything that you're going through and I'm going through, everything we face. Am I making sense this morning? Elijah had to have faith that the food would come. Now, the water was there. Didn't have to have faith in the water. It's already there. So you tithe. You got to have faith that God's going to bless. So you're obedient. You got to have faith that God will open up a door. We, as a church, as a people, as a Christian, we got our faith, yeah, that God one day will get us out of COVID. He will. One day we'll be back together again. One day we will sing together. One day we'll meet together. <laughs> one day we'll have our building. One day, and I'm just waiting on God. Keep looking, keep praying, keep pressing on, but still there's got to be an aspect of faith in waiting. Faith every day. I don't know what it's like. I've never known what it's like to have no food. I don't know what it's like to be by a brook and drink of the water and wait for ravens to come. I don't know what that's like. Even as a kid, I never knew whether we were all out of food or not. It's all right. We were okay. Even today, Meryl and I, we got freezers full. Too much food. Sometimes she said, we're not going shopping. We're just going to eat what we've got. And I said, great. I love leftovers. Warm it up. Warm it up again. By faith. Elijah had to wait every day, morning and night. They got to come back. Uh, I was thinking about prayer and faith and waiting on God. His name was George Mueller. Let me tell you a little illustration. George Mueller lived from 1805 to 1898. George Mueller was noted for his children's home in England. He was a German, moved to England, was a Christian. Let me read you a little article about George Mueller just to show you that it's possible to have faith in God and God to provide, and God would. <laughs> George prayed asking God to provide a building and for people to oversee it, for furniture and money for food and clothing. God answered his prayers. The needs of the orphanage were met each day. Each day. Sometimes a wealthy person would send a large amount of money or a child would give a small amount received as a gift or for doing chores. Many times food, supplies, or money came at the last minute. But God always provided without George telling anyone about his needs. He told no one. He just prayed and waited on God. It is said that more than 10,000 children lived in the orphanages over the years. When each child became old enough to live on his own, grow up and live on his own, George would pray with him and put a Bible in his right hand and a coin in his left. He explained to the young person that if he held on to what was in his right hand, that's the Bible, God would always make sure there was something in his left hand as well. What was the key to George Mueller's success was faith in God, prayer, and to wait. And to wait. Number five. We got six, so two left. Number five. On faith. Faith is staying faithful to God even when things dry up. If you're writing down, let me quote it to you again. Faith is staying faithful to God even when things dry up. See, not all things are going to keep going. Just like our church, we couldn't meet together. It dried up. Lord willing, it's coming back. But we can't meet together. In fact, we can't even get together as a family. In fact, if you do, we got to meet outside in the driveway or on the street like we did yesterday with a fine couple. It was good. 
So faith is staying faithful, faith in God, staying faithful to God, even when things dry up. First Kings 17, 7. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Wait a minute. The thing that Elijah was counting on, the brook, the water, sustenance, drinking. Now it's gone. Why? Because there was no rain. And you know who caused the no rain? God. But Elijah had predicted that to Ahab way back. Not going to rain and no dew. And so here come the ravens. But you know, you can only eat so much without having some kind of liquid to wash it down. To wash it down. But it's gone. What are you going to do when what you're trusting in dries up? That's where he drank. But God put him there. God knew exactly that it would dry up. Faith stays faithful to God in hard times. You, dear people, have stayed faithful to God in hard times. God bless you for that. Just stay faithful. Not easy, for sure. We all face some kind of hardship somewhere in life. Don't quit on God. Just stay faithful, even when things come to an end. Stay faithful when the job comes to an end, because there's another one, and God will help you to get it. Out. Faith trusts God when that loved one walks out. Are you with me this morning? Faith trusts God, because God is going to see you through. He knew the brook was going to dry up. He knew it. And God knows it. And God knows what you're going through. Get that this morning. Oh, I want to say that for you that are going through hard times. God knows what you're going through. He knows it. But you've been trusting in that book. But the book is no longer available to you. God knows it. Stay faithful to him. Have faith in God. God's not short concerning his promises. As some men count slackness, but as long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Maybe there's somebody you've been praying for for a long time and they don't move towards God. There's no movement. There's no indication that there's any thought that they will ever come back to God. I want to say to you and to me, keep praying, stay faithful. God's not finished. God's not done. Keep going to God on behalf when there seems as though there's no movement by that person. Would you say an amen to that? Just stay faithful to God. Faith, that, no, listen, faith doesn't need water. Faith needs God. Elijah didn't need water. Yes, he would get some. But what his real need was God. Oh, I'm going to say something, Mark and Marilyn. We don't need a building. Some of you are about to shoot me. <laughs> it's true. Jesus had no building. He would go into the temple every once in a while, but it wasn't his building. I'd love a building. I think we could do so much more. But right now, it's just not possible. But what we do need is God Almighty. And we do need to stay faithful to God and we do need to follow him, look to him, go where he wants us to go, do what he wants us to do. Because he knows exactly the plan. He had an absolute plan for Elijah, though it meant that 
Elijah could do nothing towards it. He simply had to go to the brook and wait there and drink and then quit drinking and stay faithful until this next and the last point I want us to make. And that is this. Verse 8 and 9. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. I think next week I'm going to follow through with this next portion of the scripture. So Elijah only left, not because the brook dried up. He didn't go running after brooks. He didn't go seeking where the next brook was. He simply stayed there. I don't know how long Mark and Marilyn, he stayed there. I don't know how long he waited till God said, okay, now's the time. Now go to Zarephath. I've prepared something ahead for you. God's preparing something for us. Oh, let's quit worrying about what God's got, what he doesn't have. He knows it all. Keep trusting in God. Quit trusting in you and your ability. Boy, does that make sense? See, we've taken God out of our need. And we have grabbed a hold of it. We're going to do it. Our strength. I'll fight. No, not fleeing. Sorry. No, I'm not going to a brook. I'm going to confront Ahab. No, that's us. That's me. That's your preacher. That's your pastor. That's Archie. That's me. But I got to wait. Till the one drip is done. Till the second drip's coming. Don't be so impatient. They're doing it on purpose. They got a reason. You don't want to die. You want to serve God the rest of your life. And thank God before that big bag was done dripping, the nurse came in along with the doctor. He unplugged that thing or she unplugged it while he's talking to me. And he's saying, I went over your record, went over your file. You're fine. You're good. I said, I'm good. He said, you're good. Your potassium is down. It's not bad. I look back at what you had before over the years. You're okay. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I did. I said, thank, thank you. I walked out of that Grace Hospital blessed and happy. Why? Because I waited patiently to hear the right words. And Elijah stayed by the brook until he heard the right words. And then he said, move on. Don't you move until God says to move. Is that good, preacher? It is. Don't buy until God says buy. Don't be afraid until God said, I'll take care of your enemy. And he will. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Faith. See, I'll do a review and then I want to make a final statement. Faith knows when to fight and when to flee. Faith is trusting God to provide. Faith is waiting for God to do what he promised. We need daily faith. Faith is staying faithful to God even when the brook dries up. And faith stays until God says move. See, dear folk, I wonder... I wonder, I'm speaking to myself, how much faith do I really have? See, without faith, it is impossible. You've been tuned too much on your own. That's a harsh statement, Marilyn. 
You've been solving your own problems. You've been trying to work out your own problems. You've been trying to make decisions based upon you and your knowledge. It's been all on your shoulders. It's been all on mine. Bless God. Let's learn what it means to have faith and faith in God. See, without it, it's impossible to please God. Trust you got it this morning. I encourage you. Live by faith. There's a song like that. I care not today what the morrow may bring. If shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know liveth for everything. And all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above. Let's bow for prayer. Search your heart, would you, this morning? What have you been doing on your own? What have you been fearful? Have you been fighting? Have you been solving it on your own? Have you been doing your will? Or have you waited on God? God, we need your wisdom. We want to know where to go. We want to know what building. Property. Waiting. For the right time. Maybe you don't want us to have it right now. It would cost us too much. We couldn't afford it. And if we'd step out now, we might fail. And it would disgrace you. Teach us. Show us what to do. In everything of our lives. In every need. Supply all of our needs, we pray. In Jesus' name, now bless this people. Save the lost. May they turn to Jesus Christ and put their faith in him. May they be saved. Recognize their sinner. Know that Jesus will save their soul. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just before Mark takes it over with regards to prayer, I've got two items I'd like to mention about prayer requests. One, the RM of McDonald's.